On tonight's Super Pack show, we have the latest cruise news, our photo of the week from the Carnival Cruisers All Things Positive group. Cruise director Chris the Flying Scotman is down to the downs of the ship, bringing you another segment in the life of a cruise director. Lucas is also here talking about to the crew on board, Life Below Decks. Shelly will be covering the top 10 questions asked in CCPPF for newbie cruisers. I'll be talking about the science behind volcanic islands, and we have none other than John Heal joining us live all the way from his bedroom in England, where it's 1 a.m. to talk about his career in Carnival and answer your questions live. We also will have John pick our winner in the Carnival Swag giveaway, so get ready for an amazing show because you're watching Cruise Week TV Live. Our show this week is brought to you by the folks at Good Memories Travel and by Vmix. Hi everyone, I am Matt, your host and a newbie cruiser. Looking at the lineup of people tonight, you can tell we certainly do bring on the experts to talk about and answer your questions and mine on all aspects of cruising. That way we get to all learn together and learn the tips, the tricks, and ways to save money on your next cruise. If it's your first time here to the show, let us know who you are by hitting that thumbs up button so we can say hi to you. Also, we have producer Bird and intern Eric helping out with your questions tonight. So if you have a cruise question for our guest, John, or a question for any of us, please type it into the comment section. We will do our best to get to all of them during the show. Now, I mentioned about the Carnival Swag giveaway, and we will be drawing the winner later on in the show. But there is still time to enter. To do that, you simply have to like and follow our Facebook page, which is shown right down here right down here and you will be entered but you must do it before we draw the prize so if you're watching us on a replay too bad you missed it now before we get to our guest of the night let's take a look at our photo of the week each week we pick a facebook group and ask people to submit their best cruise photo with them in it this week we ask the good members of the carnival cruisers all things policy group to submit their best photos we looked over them and picked out the best one, and this one was sent in by Tom Schoenfolder. And I have to take a closer look at this towel person to see if it was real or not. Can you imagine walking into your cabin and seeing this sitting in there? I wonder if anyone's had any heart attacks from this towel animal. It would definitely give me a bit of a scare. If you have a great cruise photo, keep an eye on your cruise groups as we pick a new cruise photo every week to feature from our show or you can email it to us at photos at cruiseweek.tv if you are booked on the carnival fascination next year get ready for some upgrades the carnival fascination will undergo an extensive multi-million dollar dry dock that will add a variety of popular food and beverage innovations including guys burger joint the alchemy bar blue iguana cantina mexican eatery Cherry on top, the poolside reg product rum bar and a blue iguana tequila bar, and a bonsai sushi express venue. The spaces will be added during a two-week dry dock taking place February 4th to the 17th of 2018 in Freeport, the Bahamas, prior to the ship resuming its year-round schedule of a seven-day Southern Caribbean cruise from San Juan, Puerto Rico, beginning February 18th of 2018. I love how they are always adding new things to older ships. To celebrate the Caribbean's island destinations and to promote the launch of the newest ship, the Carnival Horizon, Carnival captured and canned real island air from tropical ports of call and invited New Yorkers to stop and smell the tropics with a truly unique and sensational experience that took place in Manhattan's Greeley Square. Part of this week, Carnival brought the magic of a Caribbean cruise to mainland with an interactive and immersive pop-up show featuring a heated tent a steel drum band and scents from the islands pipe through the air. The event's centerpiece and the real reason everyone was there was a vending machine dispensing the chance to win a carnival cruise and free cans of island air infused with natural scents unique to each destination. Carnival designed this activation 
to give consumers a whiff of their next vacation after a recent survey conducted by the cruise lines found that 95% of Americans agree that scent can trigger vacation memories and 56% agree that a particular scent has motivated them to plan a vacation. Shortly after, thanks to uh, tanks of bottled New York air were shipped to tropical islands to replace the air that Carnival had borrowed, stating that now when New Yorkers set foot on the island, the scents will remind them of home. Our guest tonight has been called the face of Carnival, working his way up through the Carnival ranks and becoming the senior cruise director, a title that I hope references his rank and not his age. He recently, in the past few years, took a to social media where his honest and often funny insights into the Carnival, both good and bad, have resulted in millions of fans following his blogs and now his daily live videos on Facebook. I am, of course, talking about John Heald, who many cruisers is Carnival's answer to Santa Claus because he makes so many wishes come true. We managed to bribe him into the show into saying up super late tonight because he is currently at his home in England where it is after 1 a.m. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you and uh, uh, congratulations on this great uh, thing you've got going here. You should be very proud. Thanks, John. We definitely are. It has been a lot of time, progress, and a lot of success over the years doing it. I can say years because we've been over a year now, so that's that's pretty neat. Speaking of years, uh, let's go back, way back. So before you were involved with Carnival, I was looking at your blogs, some of your posts, even your Wikipedia page, and you were a commodity banker, but you left that job to become a wine steward. What made you want to take the switch from a banker to become a wine steward on a cruise ship? Um, it's, uh, it's been a long and fun journey. Um, I got on a train from London to where I live in the suburbs and, um, it was winter and, um, I started work. It was dark. I finished work. It was dark, got on the train, couldn't get a seat. Um, my nose was pressed up against the window. I was just in a foul mood and I thought to myself, there's got to be more to life than, than this. And, much to the um, dismay of my parents, I um, went to an interview as a um, uh, to be a bar waiter actually, and uh, um, on a cruise ship. And they said to me, "Do you know about exotic drinks?" And I said yes. And of course, that was a lie because I'm from England and we have warm beer, and that's pretty much it. Um, and um, I, much to my surprise, two days later, I got something called a letter which younger viewers won't know it comes with a stamp but never mind um it came through the door and there i was um getting on a, an airline called eastern airlines which no longer exists um flying to miami and two days later i walked on board the holiday um as a bar waiter and i knew nothing um there was no training it was here's your menu go serve drinks and um yeah it was I knew it was awful because I was a terrible bar waiter. On on the second day, a lady asked me for sex on the beach, and I thought, well, this is a good job. I've only been here two days. And uh, okay. sorry, family show, family values. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, here I am 30 years later working for this great cruise line. And um, I think it was just one of those things in the back of my mind. I, I really believed that I was supposed to do something else, and I consider myself – very lucky, very fortunate, and very blessed. So right now, your current position is a senior cruise director. What's the difference between a senior cruise director and a regular cruise director? Um, well, a very smart man once said, I hope it's not just age. <laughs> He's so funny, that guy. Um, it is age. So, yeah, my title at the moment is senior cruise director and brand ambassador. Um, senior cruise director was just a, a title that uh, the, the Beards gave me in Miami, which um, is, amongst other things, um, whereas I'm not really cruise directing anymore, I am I am hopefully giving some advice and help and uh, to the younger cruise directors. And we have a brilliant group of cruise directors at the moment. We really do. And um, I try and give them advice. And, I, you know, when I sail, I do some shows and... Um, uh, between my time spent on board and the rest of it on on social media, on on Facebook, and and writing the blog is um, 
is really what I spend most of my time doing. But but senior was just, I think, an acknowledgement of the fact that they couldn't get rid of me, and here I am still. Well, I mean, uh, they're probably happy that they didn't get rid of you because looking at your blog post, you get quite a lot of views. And Carnival first approached you to write the blog. Did you ever think that this blog would blow up this much? They seem kind of surprised no. you from the early ones. No, no, I really didn't. And we were bringing out a new ship uh, called the Carnival Freedom. And uh, a lady called me uh, in the office and said, would you write a blog? And I really, truly, honestly didn't know what a blog was. Um, I, I had no um, knowledge of social media. Uh, um, so I wrote the first two or three blogs I wrote were good morning. It's a beautiful day. Uh, the guests are really happy. Goodbye. And it was awful. Um, and at the end of the first week, the lady called me back and said, oh, my goodness, we've got we've had 17,000 views on the first one and 20,000 on this one. And please keep writing. And and, you know, I said, yes. And um, uh, I want to go back in time and do damage with a large pepper mill because <laughs> I spend, uh, you know, three quarters of my life doing it now. But I, I truly had no idea. Um, and as, as as I went on and, and, and still on Facebook today, I. I I'm very lucky that, that um, Carnival allows me to be me. Um, and social media, I've learned, has just become an extension of the microphone. So I try and be exactly the same way as I was uh, on stage as, as I am now on social media. It's, you know, the good, the bad, and, and, and the ugly. So you seem to be pretty savvy with social media now. I've been looking back on your Facebook pages, and you post quite of interesting uh, complaints there that I've seen by some people. Some are pretty funny. What's some of the weirdest complaints you've actually received so far? That's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a question that, that uh, I get asked a lot uh, and only because I think it does fascinate people. And, and, you know, people who, who do come up with these comments, um, they're the same on land. They're doing the same in restaurants and hotels on land as they, they do on cruise ships. I, I don't think, the cruise industry is is alone in in some of these comments, but um, uh, I have had uh, so many different ones. Um, I had a lady who wanted me to recently to um, show her twelve year old daughter winning a state ice skating championship on the dive in on the big screen to cancel the the movie Wonder Woman and play uh, an eight minute clip of her. 12 year old daughter ice skating um and when i said that we couldn't unfortunately do that um there was not a very happy lady but uh you know um it's a lot of it's my fault i opened the door to this and um i think uh when i do post a comment what what you get is a lot of uh, of comments about the comment plus embedded amongst all of that the thousands of comments that i get um is a lot of great advice you know if somebody says um, I'm, I, I couldn't find anything to eat uh, on my on my cruise that I liked, then 5,000 people will say, well, what about this, 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 and this? So I think what it does is allows people to, to see and read other people's cruise experience from that comment and, uh, and, and embrace it and, and, and gives them some great ideas what to do when they come on board. Nice. So... Kind of jumping back, let me uh, ask some questions for our viewers. Guys, also, if you are watching right now, make sure to put your questions in the comments below. We'll try to get to them later on. So this Jan Michael asks a bunch of questions, so I'm going to try to ask some of them right now. Uh, do you think Carnival will offer more of the journey-type cruises? We mentioned this a bit earlier on. Uh, can you also go into a bit of detail what a journey cruise is? So, you know, Carnival's bread and butter is... Uh, short cruises, um, four, five, six, seven day cruises, cruises that get people pregnant on cruising. It's their first experience. And wow, they, they, that's, that's, you know, that, that's our bread and butter. And to encourage new cruisers, you, you usually find that new cruisers will take uh, a shorter cruise as their first experience. But we also have um, hundreds of thousands of loyal guests who want to see new, uh, new places. Plus, can afford both financially and time, and, and nothing's more valuable in the world than time, uh, to do longer cruises. So from places like Galveston and from Miami and from Charleston, et cetera, we we've, uh, do these journey cruises. These are usually a minimum of 10 days, um, and we can take the ships further afield. 
uh, down maybe through to the uh, uh, Bonaire and, and, and Grenada or up to uh, the uh, pan partial Panama Canal transit, Limon. And during that time, uh, we have uh, uh, a lot more interaction with the crew, a lot of question and answers, guest lecturers, um, local entertainment, celebrity chefs. And I try and do as many of those as I can myself so that I can be on there to uh, to help entertain. Um, we are going to be doing a lot more. Uh, we have lots more already announced for 2018, plus we will be announcing more for 2019 as well. They, they, they're longer cruises uh, with um, uh, more um, of, the, of the things that we used to do. We have a throwback sea day to the 80s, uh, which is wonderful because uh, I get to date a, a spa girl called Sarah again. Um, and sorry, family show, family values. And uh, I, um, those 80s uh, throwback sea days, we do the old stuff, wooden horse racing, frog racing in the pool. Um, we have uh, a, a formal night with hors d'oeuvres and free drinks and all that kind of stuff, stuff that we used to do in the 80s. And, and they are massively popular, are the Journeys Cruises. So, Jan, yes, we will have more, and I'll, I hope to see you on one of them soon. Nice. We are getting bombarded with questions as I thought we would. So I'm going to try to get to as many as we can, guys. Do not be mad if I miss over some. Okay, let me be mad at this him. one. Be uh, mad. This one comes be mad from mad. Paul Graham. He says, for John, my wife and I have not been on a cruise since 2002. What would you suggest for my wife and I to do? Our first vacation since we adopted our special needs children uh, is the Valor on February 5th. So what's a good cruise for them to kind of go on? Well, first of all, I think it's anybody that adopts children with, with special needs like that uh, uh, should be lauded and praised, and you should be very proud. Um, uh, the Valor is a great ship. Um, don't be frightened to uh, have the children uh, taken care of uh, some of the time at, at Camp Ocean. We have brilliant staff there who are well-trained in dealing with, with children with disabilities and special needs. Um, and, uh, you know, let them have fun, meet new friends, um, the shows on there are, are fantastic. You will love them. And uh, drop me a line on my Facebook page uh, the day before with your cabin number as well so that I can uh, let the ship know. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you think uh, would make them more comfortable. Plus, we'll see what we can do to say welcome back and put a little smile on their faces with a little gift for them as well. Nice. We've also had a couple different guests on the show before who have had uh, some special needs kids or even some adults as well. So guys, go back to our cruiseweek.tv website and you can check out some of those videos. They gave a lot of great advice and a lot of the ships were 100% great with accompanying them. Uh, calling ahead of time too is a really great way to kind of work things out. Let me take some more questions. Okay, I'm gonna. this is from two different people, but it's pretty much the same thing. This is from Amy. She asks, John, is there going to be any new levels between platinum and diamond? And this is from Lisa. Are there going to be any new levels between gold and platinum? Basically, are there going to be any new levels in general? So this this coming year, um, we are going to be paying a lot of attention to our loyalty program. It has grown and grown and grown. When I tell you that we have close to 200,000 platinum guests, it shows just uh, um, the investment that our guests put in uh, into the loyalty they have with this cruise line. I think it's I'm safe to say that more than any other cruise line, uh, we have a group of, of people a huge group of people who absolutely love the crew, love the experience and love Carnival Cruise Line. So um, while I can't be too specific about what the levels will be, we do realize that it is time to uh, reinvest in our loyalty program and um, and make sure that that loyalty that, that people have shown us um, continues. So stay tuned for more on that. So Kim asks a pretty good question. She says, are there any cruises that are just in the USA? Uh, some of the new cruise ships are fantastic and great, but some of them do require passports to some of the destinations. Are there any ships that are just purely U.S.? No. Unfortunately, um, there is a, a rather antiquated um, U.S. law called the Jones Act, which prevents any uh, ship sailing uh, with passengers, or guests as we call them, from a United States port only going to U.S. ports. We have to go to a foreign port. Otherwise, there are charges and fines and all sorts of, of stuff that goes on there. Um, but um, at the moment, uh, we're not able to do that. Maybe Congress will change that law 
in the months to come. But at the moment, no, we have to go to a, for, a foreign flag port. Um, remember on what's called a closed loop, uh, which is where you're going to Caribbean ports of call, such as, you know, the Cayman Islands or Jamaica or the Bahamas, etc. You don't actually need a passport. Uh, you can uh, embark the ship with uh, a photo identification, driver's license, etc., and uh, uh, an original or uh, a proper copy of your birth certificate. Nice. So I've only been on two cruises myself, but both times were absolutely fantastic. And I always find it really interesting to see all the crew members on the ship. And I kind of always think about if I was to join a cruise ship, what type of job would I do? A lot of people say, oh, Matt, you would probably be a cruise director. Nope, can't do it. Way too much energy for me. They're always happy. They're always excited. And they're just wake up full of energy. No, I definitely need coffee and everything else to do. I would probably be like a blackjack dealer. They seem like they have, you know, pretty a lot of fun and everything else. Plus, they get days off for days. Anyway, if you were to change jobs again on the ship uh, for any type of age range going back in time, is there any positions on the ship you would want to do that you haven't done yet? Absolutely. Aerobics instructor. Okay. Okay. Why? Uh, why? Because I think um, uh, fitness instructors are too good looking, uh, they're too fit, and I think they put people off um, from coming to their class. I think a fat man uh, doing an aerobics class or yoga, getting people to do the downward facing yak, being able to put a leg behind your ear and not worrying if a, a noise comes out the other end, uh, those classes would be very, very popular. And I, I do look back on my life and think that as uh, an aerobics instructor, I could also offer pole dancing. There is uh, a market out there for overweight men with gray hair and bad teeth to to, to pole dance. That's um, good. And it's a great aerobic exercise. So, yeah, I would be an aerobics instructor slash pole dancer. Uh, wearing your hat. Nothing else, just the hat. I'm now limited to only drinking one glass of wine, but I might have to uh, break that rule tonight, depending on how these conversations keep going with these mental images in my head. Anyway. You know what? It, it, let me give a serious... That, that's, that's actually a great question. It's worthy of, one, of a serious answer. Um, I don't know what I could do, but I know what I couldn't do, uh, and that is um, to, uh, look at your waiter carrying 12 plates mm -hmm. of dinner, cabin stewards making those cabins I, I haven't changed bed sheets in my life and and you know you look at what these crew do and they're away from their families for for seven eight months a year um you know i think when i i look at the crew and how hard they work and the smile they always have um you know again segueing back to the loyalty uh, program i think if there was a common denominator between all of our loyal guests the one thing that they would all say is one of the main reasons they keep coming back are the crew and uh, i i i believe they're the foundation uh, they were when i first started in 87 and i think they are now there's been no change agree. they are the reason that so many people come back to carnival for sure uh, when I was on the Carnival Triumph, it is one of these smaller ships, but I really enjoy talking to a lot of the crew. Um, there was one bartender specifically at the Alchemy Bar. Really clicked with her. She was amazing to talk to. Uh, we had a bunch of different conversations. So if you guys are on these ships, just chat up some of the crew members. They have some really interesting stories, especially from different countries all around the world. And it's pretty much Absolutely. a big amalgam of different cultures, and it's pretty neat. Yeah. So, John, you're able it to really go is. kind of below decks and go through all the different places to eat down there and really hang out with the crew. I'm assuming you're able to go to all of the different levels of the buffet areas or the eatery for crew. What area do you kind of gravitate towards most of the time? Well, when I first started as a bar waiter, I shared a cabin uh, on the holiday, and uh it um it was uh two in the cabin and we had uh what's uh, a, a, like a, a dormitory uh, bathroom so we had uh eight shower cubicles between i think it was about 30 people um it was very very different um and i do tend to when i'm on board i always spend some you know talk to every crew member a lot of them know me um, so I do go in the crew mess and, and, and the staff mess and, and, and sit with them and, you know, uh, go through all the different nationalities um, and, and chat with them, um, as I do with the captain and, and the officers. You know, the Italians are very good friends of mine as well. So 
Um, I do tend to uh, to hang out with uh, the crew as much as I can because that you know I grew up with them and, and they're my friends. Nice. And some of the best food, some of the best food is in the crew mess because they have a lot of um, international dishes there. Mm. So uh, you're having nasi goreng from Indonesia, you're having um, uh, pork adobo from the Philippines, or chitlins if you're from Tampa. So yeah, it's all different See, foods when i have on a lot of different uh staff from crew members uh and on different cruise ships i hate when they say that because it's kind of dangling this in front of me like oh yeah there's such great food and you can't have any but um, you know yeah one day. yeah I, i'm not sure if we it, the word great food applies to you know if we were to serve fish heads uh fish head soup uh, to somebody from um, from Savannah, Georgia, I, I'm not quite sure that's what they'd expect on their vacation. But in the old days, just very quickly, a quick story here. In the old, old days, we used to have um, <clears throat> our laundries were um, run by uh, a group of young men from China. And they had their own galleys down in, in the older ships. And every Friday, I would go down with a case of Heineken, uh, give them a case of Heineken, and they would cook uh, the most extraordinary Chinese food, and we'd sit there in the laundry around the table eating out of the bowls, and it was unbelievable. You can't do that these days. It's all different these days, but that was some of the best food. It really was. And I had to pay homage to the people who actually washed my underwear, so yeah, that's why they got the case of Heineken. Okay, we're going to just completely move on from food-related questions because I can just see myself getting more upset about this because... I'm a big foodie. I like trying weird foreign foods that I've never had before, especially the exotic food menu on Carnival is absolutely amazing. I've never had rabbit before. I recently saw it at uh, Publix, a supermarket right across the street. They have rabbit legs, but they're like $18 for two legs. And I'm just, I'm poor. I'm broke. So can't afford rabbit. Anyway, Tanya, don't worry. I have seen your questions. Tanya says, Matt, can you please ask John what his sailing schedule is for 2018? John, please tell Tanya what your schedule is for 2018. So I've got um, uh, two cruises on the Carnival Magic uh, in January and into February. The, the February 27th is the first one, then February 3rd, which is my um ele uh, 11th bloggers cruise which we're calling the ffs cruise so i have 650 people uh, coming to cruise with me for that one then i'll be on the first uh cruise on the horizon our new ship uh, on the transatlantic first cruise out of new york on her and then some journey cruises on a carnival breeze uh journeys cruise uh two journeys cruises on the breeze and i believe one on the ecstasy Plus, I'm going to throw some more cruises in there as well um, as I go through the year. Kathleen asks, how far in advance do you know which cruise you'll be on? Um, I try and book, uh, I try and decide what I'm going to be on as, as far in advance as possible because I, you know, I hope people will book and, and come and cruise with me. So um, I try and be in advance as I can, but then... You know, I have a lot of people in the office who suddenly will say, John, we need you to do this, or John, can you do that, or John, we, we don't want you at all. So I, I do get pulled from pillar to post a little bit, uh, but um, I will be posting my sh my schedule on, the, uh, on my Facebook page in the days ahead. This is a pretty good question asked by Gary Keyes. He says, are there any excursions uh, for a guest that cannot get out of a wheelchair? We're traveling with my mom and cannot find any excursions that would be able to accommodate her. So, um, you know, that's a, it's, a, it's a challenge because in some of the, the ports of call in the Caribbean, the ADA laws that we all live by and, and appreciate and understand um, based in the US don't sometimes apply in some of these Caribbean islands. They don't always have the hardware uh, to transport guests around who may have walking challenges, wheelchairs and motor scooters. And also a lot of the things that, you know, are highlighted in, in these ports, you know, beach tours, snorkeling, et cetera, aren't really um, uh, suitable for that. Uh, we actually are working very closely now with more of the ports of call uh, to try and get more of the island tours with wheel, wheelchair, uh, wheelchair accessible buses. Uh, what was the name of the person who asked that question? I'm sorry, uh, who was that? That was Gary Keyes. Let me post Gary, that back up there. Um, if, you, if you write to me uh, one week before you cruise on, on my Facebook page, um, I will put you in personal contact with the short excursion manager on whichever ship you're going on, and he or she will sit with you 
on embarkation day and go through your options so that we make sure we've got the right thing for you to do with your family. So John, can you talk a little bit more about the blogger screws? Chris Confey at says, uh, did you ever think that the blogger screws would be such a big success? Um, I didn't. That was from Chad, whose um, who's, who's father, uh, Ed, or Big Ed, as we, uh, we all called him. Um, he was uh, a gentleman who uh, sadly just recently passed away, a character full of life and full of energy. And he was one of the only people who have been on every single one of them. It started um, 11 years ago uh, with just 100 people. And it was just a, a little thing. I said, listen, I'm going to be on this ship. If anybody wants to cruise with me, we'll call it a bloggers cruise. People who read my blog. And um, and we, we had 100 people come on that one. And... Uh, here we are 11 years uh, later, still doing them. Uh, could have sold over a thousand again, but I wanted to stop at 650 because the idea is that they spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with me. I do uh, shows for just for them, a lot of private activities, events. We give them t-shirts and gifts. And it's just a way for me to say thank you for, uh, for people who, uh, who stick with me on social media. And uh, we have a lot of fun. We really do. We have a lot of new cruises, a lot of experienced cruises, it's extremely friendly and uh, a little bit silly. So, John, I was uh, looking through some of your old blog posts, as I do, oh, to try yeah. to get some more information. I think you know what's coming. Uh, I think the I think an empty glass is coming, isn't it? Oh, John! Oh, this my glass is just full of enthusiasm right now. So, you were uh, you wanted to go through a goth phrase, uh, kind of growing up through some of these cruises. Can you can you talk about that goth phase? It's uh. Um, I can't well, picture you in mascara. I, I, I never realized I was. I just, uh, you can probably tell I'm, I'm not a sun worshiper. I, I, I'm English and, uh, uh, and large. So if I lay on a beach, either um, my skin peels off or, or somebody from Greenpeace tries to push me back into the sea. So um, I, I did at one point in my life have a long uh, black leather coat um, and a, a black t shirt. Um, I had black hair. I know I don't now, but uh, and and one of my old old girlfriends uh, in, said uh, to me, um, "I'm a goth too." So yeah, that 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 goth period. I actually sailed with a group of goths, and I have, you know, I think what they do is amazing. But I mean, some of them really. When I was a cruise director on the Legend, we had a group of a large group of goths, and some of them actually had their teeth sharpened yeah. into fangs but sharp teeth and they had the the their eyes done so that they look like uh, yeah it was uh it was interesting i'm i'm more into my um eskimo stage at the moment as you can see i can see that i can see that there was a question oh my goodness let me try to find that all the way down here i think it's gone now there's just so many questions they're asking if you're wearing a parka how cold is it there right now well, it's minus four outside and it's one o'clock in the morning. So I turned the heating off because I'm cheap, as I said. Um, and um, I actually just finished my dog is laying on the sofa behind me. And uh, I just finished taking a breeze for a night walk to try and stay awake so I could do this show. And it's so cold outside. Um, I actually tripped over one of his poos um, because it froze as soon as it came out of his bottom. So uh, that's how cold it is. Do you miss being on a cruise ship right now during the low, low temperatures up there in England, or is it kind of nice to be home for the holidays? It's 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 always wonderful to be home um, for the holidays, and I think uh, for any crew member uh, on any cruise ship in, in in the industry, one of the, the the hardest times to be away from family is during a you know Christmas time or, or mm -hmm. whatever you're uh, um, you're celebrating. But uh, I certainly do miss uh, the the warmth, but um, I think I look quite cuddly and a little bit, you know, a little bit. If I was to give you my sexy look as well while wearing a furred hood, I think um, your your viewers would increase. There's a certain blonde lady in the left of my bottom of my screen here. Uh, if I was to give her my sultry look, she would stop. She would put her her martini down and probably faint. Because if I was to do this, watch. Oh, there's the smolder. She's just fainted. There you go. I can see how you uh, climbed up the rank so quickly now. You have the cast yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. So 
you're on cruise ships quite often. Um, how difficult is it to bring your family on, or is it pretty easy to kind of bring them on and cruise with them? Car- Carnival's really good about that. So uh, once you've completed your first contract, every crew member has the ability to bring their family on board uh, for, for basically a free cruise. Um, the, the challenge with that is certainly for your waiter, your cabin steward or a chef, et cetera, um, you still have to work. So whereas, um, you know, when you're home that you, you're, you're not working, um, when you're bringing family on board, not only do you have to do your job, but you have to look after them as well. Um, my wife and daughter used to cruise a lot. My mom and dad used to cruise a lot. Um, age now sort of stops mom cruising a little bit. And um, also with my daughter being at school in England, you get fined um, the equivalent of uh, $80 a day for every day you take your child out of school, um, which without a good, you know, valid reason, note from the doctor, Mm -hmm. et cetera. So um, obviously there are restrictions with that, but uh, I've been very lucky that they have cruised with me a lot over the years. Nice. I always like kind of talking to um, a lot of the cruise directors about that. I feel like it'd be a bit tough to not having them on board all the time with you. But that's nice if you have families. But uh, Keisha over here asks, are there any get togethers for singles on the ships? For people who travel solo, it would be a great way to connect with others. Uh, I know Shally talks about the electric white night at the discos, and it's always nice to meet people at bars. But are there any specific events for single people to meet each other? In, you know, if I go back 10 years, we used to have a lot of singles events. We'd have a singles party, we'd have singles gatherings, and people would, you know, we'd host a, an activity for 10 minutes and then you'd watch people gravitate towards each other. That's changed now because people, if they want to meet new people, they're so used to doing it on one of these, right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're on eHarmony or Farmers Weekly or whatever it's called um, to, to, to meet people. Um, and when we hold singles activities now, and we do have them on board. There are people who are not used to actually physically talking for the first time, meeting somebody actually face to face. And they're like, um, so uh, we, we actually find it a bit more challenged to get people together. But yes, we do have singles activities. Um, we have um, in the piano bar on the first night of the cruise uh, on every ship, we have uh, a singles meeting. So uh, the piano bar entertainer would encourage people to meet and do some introductions. And maybe it's something that we should do more, um, more of. Uh, and, and, you know, I tried speed dating a few years ago when I was still a cruise director. That was a disaster. So that kind of segues into my next, our uh, Stan Pace's question. He says, Matt, please ask John, what's your most embarrassing slash funny moment as a cruise director? I always love hearing these too. Well, I have so many. Uh, I mean, oh, my goodness. Um, I came out uh, in the old days. I came out uh, for my Welcome Aboard show, and um, this was before email and all sorts of stuff, uh, of, you know, with the office communicating with you, saying this is what's happening this week, this is who's sailing. And I told uh, I, I came out and told her, you know, not even a risque joke, just something that was a, maybe a, a little bit of a W innuendo, and 600 people stood up and left the lounge all at the same time. And it was only afterwards that I was told that we had a, a large Jehovah's Witness group on board and my uh, my little play on words was not appreciated. Um, I um, uh, had to introduce um, our chairman, Mickey Arison, and uh, the um, new uh, head coach of the Miami Heat basketball, which was being announced on the imagination. They'd gone through this huge thing to get coach Pat Riley to come on. So we had all the press there. It was live on all the local television. And um, I totally forgot his name. Uh, I said, Coach. <laughs> and that was rather embarrassing. Um, I did a, oh, so many. I did a, um, somebody reminded me of this uh, on my page the other day. They were in the audience when I did a marriage proposal um, and had uh, the orchestra playing the music and we had the lights and, and there's a thousand people in the lounge for one of the shows. And um, the guy knelt down and, and, and uh, said some beautiful words and presented the ring and uh, asked to marry this lady. And she just shook her head, started to cry and ran off stage, um, leaving me and a guy on his knees. 
um and i said we're videoing it so if you play it backwards it'll have a happy ending good, um, good. and the guy the guy the guy that actually that happened to uh cruised recently with his new wife who who said yes so 17th time lucky so, so many so many embarrassing times so so many but so many fun times as well that's why and those I are the ones tell i can people tell you to, here. Uh, i always tell people that if you are going to propose make sure they're either going to say yes 100 percent, or do it the last day of the cruise so you don't have to have that awkward you know i got four <laughs> days together and they said no yeah, that, that cabin can become very small all of a sudden oh yeah so what's the most common question that people ask you? Uh, having your Facebook page or blog post, you must be kind of used to seeing a specific question by now. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few uh, uh, common ones. What's my favorite ship? What, um, uh, how much do I earn? I get that asked all the time. Like they think I'm going to, you know, say yes, this is how much. Um, but I think when it, uh, uh, as far as a cruise related question, I think a lot of them are, are, are asking now is um, a lot of it is about the internet. A lot of people want to know about um, uh, safety. A lot of people want to know about, uh, you know, specific things that they want to do on a ship. Um, but at the moment, I think uh, guys burgers is the question. Uh, everybody wants to ask what time does it open? Are they on my ship? Uh, will, the, will we put a guys burger on this ship before uh, you know, I cruise. That that seems to be something that everybody wants because those are so good. Have you tried one? Oh, of course. I love Guy's Burgers. It's just so easy to describe a burger and just go, especially since you can go to other different places like the buffet, grab some more toppings, throw it on, and boom. You got a pretty quick meal. It's always nice. But my favorite yeah. thing on the mm -hmm. ships, easily, hands down, the Alchemy Bar. It's just so great. And they have so many options and customize your martini. What is it you like about prices. what is it you like about the Alchemy Bar? Is it is it the menu or is it also the people that work there? Because um I don't drink, but um I know that when I, I, I go there and I know what people tell me mm -hmm. that often it's not just the menu and the different uh, cocktails that these alchemists can make, but it's the actual personalities behind the bar. So I originally started going there. I'm a scientist myself, a microbiologist. I love science, so the decor of it just lured me there. Plus, I love martinis. They're one of my favorite types of drinks to have. So looking at the menu was really great, especially the menus that they light up, too. That's pretty awesome. So that just immediately drew me in. Um, the bartenders are always amazing and have such great enthusiasm and energy. Plus, the way that they make the drinks is very theatrical as well. So you can kind of have a little show, too. And we've gotten a bunch of great videos of them making it. And they really do add a spark and more life to the drink than some of the other places. The other drinks, don't get me wrong, are great. But the Alchemy Bar, they just kind of go above and beyond what a drink should be. And it's yeah. great. Yeah, the, the, the Cucumber Sunrise is very popular. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a uh, there's one with blackberries, which everybody seems to really love. Um, there's the something called the deal deal closer, and then there is the new one uh, on the menu, which is the tequila and prune juice, which is the uh, what they call that the Mexican Roadrunner. That's a, that's a really good one as well. That's good. That's good. I'll make sure to order some for my uh, some of my friends. Be like, hey, like they just got this new drink on here, and I got a drink card, so uh, take a sip of this. You know. You can even yeah, try, try to make a bit of prune juice. No, they're, they're great guys they're, and girls. They really are. How's it's, your glass, by the way? Is, is, is your glass half full or half empty? It's always full of laughter and fun and excitement, John, even though there's only a little bit left. I, somebody is going to tell me at the end of the show that you have drunk more interviewing me than any other guest you've had on your show. That is not true. I've refilled a couple of drinks before. <laughs> Usually during some interviews, you know, true. they'll okay. see my glass is full, will slowly deplete, and then it just okay. kind of randomly fills up, and it's just great. Anyway, so wow. as you can see, it's pretty this... cold here, and uh, yeah, it's always nice to have speed service. Our producer is you've got a uh, very good at a hands you your wine. Wow, you you really are. You've made it in life. You've got somebody who hands you in your wine. That's very impressive. You know, sometimes it's just hard to wake up and be me in the morning, and then I come to cruise week, and it's just so much easier. It's like I'm on a ship right now. It's great. It's great. <laughs> well, <sighs> I can't say. What anyway, say. move on quickly. So Moving on to the next question. So I've been on the ships uh, quite a bit, and I've seen a lot of the menus for some of the main dining rooms. A lot of them are very similar and quite repetitive from ship to ship. 
do you ever get sick and tired of eating uh, meals in the buffets? And is that kind of why you gravitate towards the crew menus? Or do you just really like eating one specific meal every time you're on? Um, well, we, you know, we're changing a lot of things. We just put a new deli menu on uh, some of our ships. Uh, we've got a new steakhouse menu, a new cucina menu, new things uh, on the menus in the dining rooms as well. Um, uh, I think, um, do I get, no, I, I don't get sick, but it is nice uh, when you can just maybe eat something one night that's a little off menu. Um, there are times when, you know, I don't want to go to the dining room and, and have a huge meal. So, you know, I, I, I'll go to Lido and have uh, some soup and, and you know, maybe a, a, something from the deli or something. But um, I do, I, I put masses, I would do a show, I would miss dinner. I would be out of, um, of you know, walking around the ship, do, do a couple of shows, come back to the cabin, order a couple of BLTs from room service and go straight to bed, which is why um, I went uh, from uh, somebody who looks like you without the hat, obviously, I wouldn't say the hat was part of me, but I was as skinny as you. Um, and uh, then I put masses of weight on and that's, you know, so now I'm, I'm on a, on a really strict diet. In fact, uh, you're very skinny, aren't you? You are very I'm, skinny. I'm trying. I'm trying. I work a lot at yeah, work, lifting grain, like and you. beer, you eggs, all that fun stuff. So yeah, we would... talked about um, some of the single activities and meetups, but a lot of people have been asking about solo cabins. There are a bunch of questions, guys, so I cannot post them all. But uh, Stephen is the last one that posted about it. Uh, tell me a bit more about solo cabins. Are there any works in the nature of getting more solo cabins or is it still kind of joint cabins that you have to pay for? Yeah, at the moment, um, we don't have any solo cabins and no, no plans to do so. And I know that's not what uh, uh, some of our solo cruisers want to hear. Um, you know, we are a family cruise line and uh, at the moment we we don't have a, a, a really big um, input uh, for our, uh, our solo guests. I do think that if somebody's paying for a solo cabin, we should consider giving them double points towards their loyalty basis if they're paying for two people. I think maybe we can consider doing that in the future. But at the moment, no plans uh, for, uh, for the solo cabins. Mm. So, John, we have a little prize to give away on tonight's show. And uh, this was pretty kind of Carnival HQ to be sending us some Christmas items that we're going to be giving away right now. So we asked everyone to like and follow our Facebook page to be entered. And John, we need you to pick a number between 1 and 2,074. And we will look up that person who that number was. Like and follow us. And we got some amazing cruise specs. So John, pick a number 1 to 2,074. I'm going to go with... 777. Okay, 777. Let's get that slot number ticking. And we have... Wow, Bethany. look at that graphic. Bethany Cantrell. Congratulations, you are the lucky winner of Carnival Towels. So we have these two wonderful fluffy... Oh gosh, there's three of them. Three! Carnival towels given to you, and if you PM us later on with your name and your Facebook page, we will get your information, and we will ship them to you later on. I'm just going to put those aside next to my wine. Congratulations, Bethany. So thank you, John and Bethany. You win the box of Carnival Cruise swag. We will be contacting you after the show to find out where to ship it to. And a big thanks to you, John, for joining us tonight. John, where can people follow you and your blog? Um, my Facebook page is facebook.com slash John Heald, H-E-A-L-D. You can, uh, my blog is John Heald's um, uh, just like the Facebook page. If you have any questions, any celebrations you have on board, I will be gladly sending a little something to you to help celebrate and hopefully we'll give you a lot of news uh, as well. Um, and, uh, I hope to be invited back here again on Cruise Week uh, TV so that I can uh, enjoy the sights and sounds of your glass being emptied, um, the the lovely sight of uh, people eating uh, on the uh, on the little window beneath me here, um, some drinks, and, and seriously, congratulations. I think this is a brilliant idea that you're doing. 
Um, and I wish you continued success with it. And to all the people who cruise Carnival who are watching this, thank you so much. I wish you and your families a very thank happy you, Christmas, happy holidays, and uh, we'll hope to see you very soon. So who likes to save money or get money back on their cruise? Did you know you can actually save money by booking through a travel agent? That's something the cruise lines won't tell you. A few other reasons for using a travel agent are personal service and cash credit back. You can actually cruise for cheaper. So whatever cruise you are planning to be on, give Good Memories Travel a call. Get the same great rates as booking yourself. Plus, you may get an onboard credit or a customer reward. They actually give you money to go cruise with. They enjoy planning and helping you with group cruises, family reunions, weddings, and honeymoon cruises as well. Good Memories Travel specializes in handling every aspect of your cruise. Imagine letting someone else do all the work while you get to relax. In fact, Debbie is personally handing our group cruise in the Carnival Horizon in 2019. But they don't just handle cruises for Carnival. They book cruises for all lines like Carnival, Royal, MSC, Norwegian, the new Virgin Cruise Lines, and more all over the world. They're your one-stop place for everything when planning your cruise. Call Debbie for a free no-obligation call cool on your next cruise. What have you got to lose? Debbie can be reached at 321-338-2953 and, of course, through the website at goodmemoriestravel.com. And let them know you heard about them on CruiseWeek.tv. From one cruise director to another, we have Chris the Flying Scotsman, who is the cruise director on the Carnival Dream. And he has been demoted. Let's take a look. Well, hi, everyone. This is Chris the Flying Scotsman here on the Carnival Dream. And welcome to another segment from Life of a Cruise Director. Keep tuning in every week to get these little segments. And, of course, watch it all live on Cruise Week TV. Keep watching. Now, you're probably wondering... Chris, where are you? Are you in a, a laundry shop or, you know, have you left Carnival and started washing clothes for a living? No, I've not. Um, I'm backstage. Uh, some of the guys, this is the changing room, some of the guys are uh, getting their clothes washed uh, for the from the shows. I'm just going to fix that so it looks better. Um, so all the costumes in here are, are getting washed, like mic belts and all the good stuff. Uh, they do this every single week, of course, to get ready for the big, big production show. It's, uh, I've got two weeks left and then I'm home. So it's really, really nice. It's kind of build up to Christmas. But I don't know if you know this yet, but I thought I'd let you know. In three weeks' time, the day that Kimberly leaves, my young 19-year-old brother gets here, the Carnival Dream, to start his first ever big job as a Carnival Dream Fun Squad member. So he's going to be on here with me. Uh, for the first couple of weeks to show him the ropes. Uh, he's going to be doing all the trivias, the games, the parties. He's going to be here. And then I go on vacation, but when I come back in January, he'll still be here until the end of April. So uh, two two brothers working together uh, in an entertainment team. It's going to be interesting. Uh, it's been done before, though. Uh, if you've ever cruised before with Carnival, there was a cruise director called Kevin Noonan. And Kevin was my boss for, for a long time. And his brother was called Mitch. And they worked together, his first contract, and then he let Mitch go and do his own thing. And that's the plan that I want to do. I want to show Steve and my brother the ropes and then go, bye-bye, enjoy Carnival. Today is a special day. Uh, it sounds a bit loud with music, yes it is, but we are here today for the Build a Bear 20th anniversary. Uh, this is a massive, massive event. Build a Bear has been going for 20 years, and it's been with Carnival for the last two years, I believe. Uh, and today we've got this amazing thing I have to show you. It's like all the beautiful things like this. Check this out. Down here. What? Look at that! Look at all the cakes and biscuits and everybody. And there's all of our amazing youth team on board. They are making all the bears from scratch, but it's just unbelievable to look at. So check this out, build the bear. It's one of my favorite things on board. Come and cruise with us on the Carnival Dream. And happy 20th anniversary to Build the Bear Workshop. Thanks for watching Life of a Cruise Director. And if you want to see that full vlog series every single week, you can join us here in the subscription. Don't forget to subscribe to Facebook as well, Flying Scotsman CD. And I'll see you soon. Keep watching Cruise Week TV. Thanks, Chris. Don't forget to follow Chris and his vlog over on YouTube. And if you want to see Chris show see you something specific, let us know and we will ask Chris for an upcoming segment. So 
Our very first group cruise is set for the Carnival Horizon in 2019. This is being put on by our good friends at Good Memories Travel, and we would love to get our entire community on there with us. This is February 23rd of 2019, and we hope to have our entire team on board having a blast with you all and enjoying one of Carnival's biggest and newest ships. There is a web page for the cruise, and that is cruiseweek.tv slash group cruise. Let us know what you would like to see on the group cruise since we have never done one before. The entry for the $500 drawing has been extended until December 31st. Just a few weeks left to get that $500. So go on ahead, book and join myself, Bird, Joe, and Shally with you all on the ship. <laughs> We all love to go on a cruise and visit tropical ports and relax on a fabulous island, but did anyone ever wonder where they came from? So this is my worst science subject, geology, so give me a bit of a break here. Okay, the Earth's crust is made up of slabs of material called plates, which move relative to one each other. The eastern Caribbean islands lie on a plate boundary. The North American plate, which is the denser of the two, sinks beneath the Caribbean plate, creating suitable conditions for the magma to be produced. The magma then rises to the surface of the Earth, where it may erupt to form a volcano. This process is called subduction, and this is how the volcanic islands of eastern Caribbean were formed. Volcanoes are vents or openings in the Earth's crust through which hot molten rock, called magma, and gases from the interior of the Earth are released. Sometimes, but not always, these solid parts pile up around the vent to form volcanic mountains. Some volcanoes are literally slits or holes in the ground, while others are broad mountains with gentle slopes. Volcanoes in the Eastern Caribbean are mainly steep-sided and roughly conical in shape. They consist of alternating layers of solid lava, which is magma that has reached the Earth's surface, and broken fragments of lava called pyroclastic rocks. Since they are layered, they are called stratovolcanoes. There are 19 live volcanoes, which means they are likely to erupt again in the Eastern Caribbean. Every island from Grenada to Saba is subject to the direct threat of volcanic eruptions. Islands such as Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Manatique, Dominica, Guadalupe, Monastra, Neves, St. Kitts, St. Eurotis and Saba have live volcanic centers, while other islands such as Anguilla, Antigua, Barbuda, Barbados, British Virgin Islands, and most of the Grenadas and Trinidad and Tobago, which are not volcanic, but they are close to volcanic islands and are therefore subject to volcanic hazards, such as severe ashfall and volcanically generated tsunamis. Volcanoes are a pretty neat feature for some of these tropical islands that attract scientists and tourists alike. They are amazing, powerful sources of nature that have the simultaneous ability to create or destroy. Hawaii is a great example of volcano tourism. The Hawaiian culture is also deeply immersed with lores and legends of volcano gods and goddesses. Most of these islands will offer tours to the base of the volcano as long as there's no severe lava flow. So my wonderful co-host has been busy getting ready for Christmas, and I am sure you are going to make a big family Christmas feast. Shelly, do you typically do Christmas at home, or do you go out to a restaurant or eat? And what have you got for us this week? Well, hi, Matt. Uh, we cook at home, of course. There's no eating out for Christmas. Uh, normally, our tradition is uh, on Christmas Eve, we do little appetizers and things like that. And then on Christmas Day, uh, my in-laws cook homemade tamales, and we go to their house and, and enjoy those. So we do that for every Christmas. Uh, they have delicious tamales from scratch. Um, also, I just want to say it was so exciting to have John Heald on the show tonight. Uh, we love you in CCPBF, and uh, maybe one day you'll join the group, John. Hint, hint. Uh, but anyway, we are nearing 145,000 members in the group, so uh, we would love to have you be a part of the group. I know that you have a Facebook page, not necessarily a personal page, mm -hmm. so if you have a alternate account or anything that you would like to join with you just let me know I'll, I'll accept that request right away so but uh this week uh what i came up with was the top 10 questions uh asked in ccppf carnival cruisers past present and future um 
not everybody logs in every day. Not everybody gets on Facebook every day, but there are certain questions that come up almost daily in the group. So I wanted to answer those questions today. Um, the first question that came up with that we see all the time is, do I need a passport? Uh, the answer to that question is no. You are not required to have a, a passport. Your birth certificate and your state issued identification is all you really need. But please be aware that if there were any problems to arise during your cruise and you had to fly home, uh, not having a passport uh, could be a, a delay you getting on a plane or anything else. So I highly recommend going ahead and spending the money and getting that passport. Um, the initial cost is a little high, but it's worth it. It doesn't expire for 10 years. Uh, if you're um, an, a, not a minor, when you're an adult, your, your passport will uh, stay good for 10 years. Um, the number two question, uh, can I take a fan? on board. Uh, yes, you can take a fan. Uh, I personally cannot sleep without a fan on. It's nothing about the temperature in the room. I've never had a cabin that I felt like was super hot or anything like that. It's the noise that I need to have. And everyone always says, have you tried the app or the white noise machine? Uh, they don't work for me. I need a fan. I always uh, bring a small nine inch travel fan. You can usually purchase one on Walmart or Target or anywhere like that. The problem seems to be the port, not the ship. It, uh, a fan is an allowed item that you can have on your on the cruise, but every time someone asks this question, several people will comment how they have their fan confiscated, and it for some reason it has to do with the port, not the ship. Carnival says you can bring a fan, so um, my advice would be if you were to have your fan confiscated at the port. They do have fans available at guest services, uh, but there are only so many available. So like me, I might kill somebody if I don't have my fan at night so I can sleep. You know, I'm not going to go sleepless for seven days. So if you have to have a fan and your fan was taken from you from the port security, uh, I would just run down to guest services first thing, say, hey, mm -hmm. I need a fan. Uh, but again, they only have so many available, exactly. but as far as carnival carnival is concerned, they are allowed. Uh, it's, it's, it's frustrating that the port themselves is the one that seems to have the issue with it and not mm -hmm. the ship. So, um, I've cruised out of only two different ports, my home port Galveston and also Miami. And, uh, I've never had my fan taken from me in 15 cruises. Uh, the one port that seems to come up a lot is Port Canaveral. Uh, for some reason they have, uh, they hating on the fans. I don't know why, but, um, anyway, it, 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 it what are you doing there, Matt? <laughs> just uh, demonstrating is it, is how that be on uh, the difficult it would be. I, I was just demonstrating how people reel? would try to take your fan from you and they're just like struggling. No, I need to sleep yeah, to there might be a problem. We might have a problem if somebody try to take my fan. Um, number three, uh, one of the most asked questions in CCPBF, is Cheers worth it? Yes, it's worth it. Yes, um, it is. The thing is, okay, if you're not a big drinker, if you only have a cocktail here and there, maybe a glass of wine here or there, it, it probably wouldn't be. If you drink six or more adult beverages during your during a day, yeah, during during your cruise, during a day on your cruise, uh, it's worth it. At, at, at six to seven cocktails, you've broken even. So if you think that you're going to drink, and I mean, people are always like, well, maybe you need to go to Alcoholics Anonymous if you drink that many drinks. I mean, think about it for a second. You go to breakfast, you have a Bloody Mary. You're sitting out by the pool. You have a couple of cocktails. You know, maybe you, you, you know, you go to the comedy club, you go to the alchemy bar. I mean, we're talking about 15 drinks in a you know, a, a whole day, mm -hmm. you know, it's not, you know, if you slam 15 cocktails in 15 minutes, you know, maybe, maybe you need to talk to your friend, Bill or whatever. You're going to have oh, very, very saying, angry at you in the morning. Right. But I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, we're talking about an entire day. The only time when it becomes a challenge is when you're in a port and mm -hmm. let's say you've been gone all day long and you've got to stuff 15 cocktails into uh, a few 
hours That's when you when get you back go to the from club your and start getting those shots. Exactly. The only place to grab maybe them. you buy your friend a cocktail. Maybe your your friend drank all their drinks, and maybe you could buy them a drink on your cheers. So, uh, cheers. Yes, if you enjoy alcoholic beverages, cheers is worth it. Um, the next thing that people ask is: Is the steakhouse? and or the chef's table worth the extra cost. Um, basically, to break it down, the chef's table is a, a foodie experience with food that you may have never tasted before, uh, things that you've never tried. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, it's very informative. It's $75 per person. I wouldn't necessarily say that every single cruise you go on that maybe you want to drop the money to do it, but it's, it's definitely worth it uh, if you've never done it before. The steakhouse is $35 per person. It's a more intimate dining experience. It's a five-star uh, type steakhouse. The food is excellent. Uh, the, the service is normally excellent. <laughs> um, that's for another show. Um, but what what I would say that, you know, it, it is worth it at least one time. If you, uh, if, if this is the only cruise you're ever gonna go on, splurge a little. They, we're talking a fraction of the cost mm -hmm. of what you would spend uh, at a five-star steakhouse or even the chef's table. I can't remember how many courses it is. It's like I want to say it's like ten. six or seven courses, but the plates yes. are very big. They're almost like cutting board yes. size. Yes, hundred percent worth it. They even come with two different hundreds pairings of, of wines. Dollars. The decorations right. that they add on it, the food is really, really nice. Uh, they have some molecular exactly. gastronomy food. And things that you probably, that you may have never had the opportunity to exactly. try before. If you're not, if you're not interested in trying anything new, then mm -hmm. I wouldn't spend the money. But if you're willing to open your mind and step outside the box a little bit and try something different, it's definitely worth the money because exactly. we're talking about $35 I, you know, this kind of meal at a steakhouse, I would tip $35, you know, <laughs> and mm -hmm. we're talking about the whole meal is $35. So, uh, to me, yes, if you're willing to step outside it. the box, totally worth it. Um, Presentation, the food, the, the quality, just make sure you guys try exactly. everything because if you don't, one, you're wasting the money that you paid for it. And two, right. you always wonder what if I like it? Yes, cargo. Right. And I, like I would it. say that the chef's table would be more for what like Matt and I consider ourselves foodies. We consider ourselves people that are willing to try something we've never tried before. Mm -hmm. Um if you're if you're if you're not open to that, then maybe it wouldn't be worth it. But like the steakhouse, we're talking about a good steak, a, a good salad, an appetizer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that to me is definitely worth it. There's nothing, oh, yeah. you don't have to get anything at the steakhouse that's, you know, out of the craziness factor. But um, the next question, I've been told by Bird that I have to, you know, <laughs> we've only got a few minutes because this was a jam-packed show. So um, the next question, um, I see this asked a lot. Uh, are there AA and LGBT meetings on board the ship? And the answer to that is yes to both. Um, in your fun times paper, you'll see uh, normally on a daily basis, you will see a time and a location for the Friends of Bill. And the Friends of Bill is your Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Um, and then you will also see your Friends of Dorothy. And your friends of Dorothy are your LGBT, lesbian, gay, bi, and transsexual get-togethers. Both of those are available on every ship. Uh, you just have to check your fun times paper for the time and location. Um, if you are struggling with an alcohol problem, I mean... <laughs> I don't have one, neither does Matt, but, but if you are, those uh, meetings are available to you at any time uh, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, they have get-togethers. They also have veterans get-togethers on every ship for our veterans. Um, just check your fun times paper for times and location. Um, number six, how much luggage can I take? Honey, you can take as much luggage as you can. Your little heart desires. And believe me, I've tested the limits. 56 um, pairs of shoes in one carry-on bag. Well, not in a carry-on. I got to check my shoes. But my fan now, put your fan in your carry-on. Because if you put in your check luggage, you might have, you know, go to the naughty room. 
they don't want to look at it. But the thing, okay, Carnival has suggestions for luggage. They suggest that you take only a, but there are no restrictions. You can take whatever you want. However, your carry-on luggage, you can take 15 carry-ons if you want to, but they have to be 16 by 24, which is the size of the scanner uh, for the security. It has to fit in there. If your carry-on luggage doesn't fit in there, you can still take it, but you will have to check it. So um, now if you're flying, there will be restrict. you know, like Southwest Airlines, you've got two bags up to 50 pounds per uh, for free, up to 50 pounds, two bags. Um, so if you're flying in, they have restrictions, but they do not have restrictions on Carnival. You can, my poor husband, <laughs> we honey get the bags because we got lots of them because i you know it takes a lot you know get this going on so um ne next question that i see asked a lot is how early can i book my returning flight after the cruise normally under normal circumstances barring no problems and no issues no late arrivals anything like that you are no most letters. likely going to be off Right. <laughs> no trips to the naughty room to pick up your stuff that, you know, you may have tried to smuggle on. Um, you, uh, where was I? <laughs> oh, the time you can book your flight. Um, you're normally going to be off the ship between 10, 1030, mm -hmm. something like that. It would be my personal advice that you do not book a flight before two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Nobody wants to be rushed. Weather, traffic. Perhaps your luggage was misplaced. I mean, anything could happen. People ask all the time, um, isn't 12 o'clock flight? You know, there's no way I would risk that. I mean, you would probably miss it because you've got to get from the ship, get mm -hmm. go through customs, get your luggage, get to the airport. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but uh, check with your particular airline to see what the time frame is. But most airlines, you can drop your luggage off several hours before your flight. So get off the ship uh, because people, what they're concerned about is how am I going to drag, you know, drag mm -hmm. all my luggage around with me if I want to go eat lunch or I want to go shopping or something. So you can always take an Uber, take a taxi, run to the airport, drop off your luggage. Go eat lunch, go do a little shopping, have a little fun, take your time, don't be rushed. A lot of people choose to fly out the next day. Um, I don't necessarily want to do that. I love to go on cruises, but when it's over, it's over and I'm ready to go home. But I would never book a flight an hour and a half after the ship, you know, let me off because that would just be pushing it, in my opinion. Um Next is a, a question that is often asked is, what's the best way to communicate with family and friends on board? Um, back in the olden days, and I have done this myself, walkie-talkies, right? So my son, the very Titanic? first couple of... <laughs> no, they didn't have walkie-talkies on the Titanic. Um, but uh, like my son, he was, I think he was nine, the first cruise that we went on, we bought the walkie-talkies. They're great, except if other people are on the same channel as you, you get to listen to their little conversations. You know, where the hell are you? <laughs> you said you were going to be on the lead out. <laughs> I'm like, uh, wrong person. And then there's always the fact that, you know, let's say you're at the Lido deck at the pool. You know, your walkie talkies in your beach bag. You're not going to hear your kid mm -hmm. like, mom, where are you? Mom, mom. That's so when you just turn it off. Now, like, Mom's busy. I'm trying to nap. You can go have fun. <laughs> no. Club kids. I, right. I, you're right. But you still want to keep in touch with your kid. Exactly. And we would have the little dry erase board and be like, okay, me and dad are at the bar, you know, come and find us. But um, basically now with, with us, they have a social media package you can purchase. It's $5 mm. a day. You turn your phone on airplane mode. You can use the Facebook Messenger to chat with their friends or family that's on board with you. I mean, almost everybody has a smartphone at this point. You put it on airplane mode. You use that. The Carnival Hub is a great resource. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't used that specifically for texting yet, but I know it's a, a little bit of an extra charge for uh, the texting when back and forth. Bird, on the Carnival myself Hub. and I usually go on cruises. We always use the Carnival Hub just because it's a one-time flat rate, I want to say. Um, it's 
uh, directly charged to your cabin. Uh, it's pretty great, right. not your cabin. I believe it's charged to your card. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've been on a cruise. Or... Now, is the Carnival Hub more or less than it is to get the social media? Like, I, I know that they, like, if you get the social media, it's mm -hmm. less. It's, okay, it's so you can just text back and forth. Flat for the whole entire cruise, which is nice because you oh, can just wow. completely text them, but they also have to have the Carnival Hub app. But I mean, the majority of the time. Right. Bird has the big packages for the internet because we're doing the live streams and everything else. Uh, having yeah, the Carnival Hub app for myself and anyone else that's going on a cruise with us, it's a lot easier just because it's five bucks. And we can just text each other, okay, right. I'm here, I'm there. Plus it has your Carnival the Fun The social time, media app is $5.00. Right. The social media app is five dollars a day. But mm -hmm. what you're saying is uh, you were able to text on the Carnival Hub app for just like a flat $5 fee for flat. the entire cruise. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a bit so worth either it. either one of those will either one mm -hmm. of those is a great way. Um, a lot of people are like, should I get a walkie talkie? I'm like, don't do it. Just, you know, just splurge on the either the Range Carnival Hub or metal just ship. do the social media. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Um, next one. This is a question that I see constantly. It always causes big drama and everybody gets all crazy and everything. Should I tip in addition to the prepaid gratuities? Yes. Do not be cheap. Okay. Just don't. Okay. We're talking about people that this crew, they're working the longest. You wouldn't even be able to survive the same amount of hours that these people work and the requests that are made and the accommodations that they have to make. You have a good cabin steward. You had a great waiter in the dining room. Uh, you had a favorite bartender in the casino. Just give them give them some extra tip um don't be cheap i mean in my opinion just don't just give them some extra these people work so hard for their money mm -hmm. so hard it you know what twenty dollars to us is so much more to them and i always in the, the the minute i get my cabin i find my cabin steward twenty dollars here you go thank you make sure my ice bucket's full we are easy to deal with. You know, I, I, we don't need constant uh, babysitting from you, but these people work so hard. Don't be cheap. Just give them some extra money. If you're going to go on a cruise, just put that in part of your budget. Exactly. Hands down. Do it. Especially just if you go it. to a specific bartender. I feel like the bartending staff, especially because they have to deal with so much. Some of your servers right. in the main dining room, they're absolutely amazing. Your cabin sewers, everyone really does deserve that. I mean, you know, if they go above and beyond what you've expected, they definitely deserve a tip. Sometimes um, people can fall a bit short. I haven't personally had that experience. Bird's been on far more cruises than I have. I don't think he's ever complained about anything either. Shelly, you've been on many, many cruises as well. Have you actually ever had a bad service where you just like, oh, I don't, I don't think they deserve a tip? I will honestly tell you that when I see complaints like that in, in CCPBF, I, I have never had a cabin steward that did not do anything that I asked them to do. Uh, I'm not, I mean, I know I come across like this high maintenance gal, right? Like I need all this extra attention. Uh, you know, I need my room cleaned once a day. I don't need them to come in there three or four times a day and change all my towels. And I mean, I'm, I'm very easy going with that. And I have never in 15 cruises have I ever had a cabin steward that, that did not meet or, or go beyond my expectations. They have always been wonderful. I always feel like $20 isn't even enough, but mm -hmm. you know, for them, it's like just the gesture of giving them something extra on top of the prepaid gratuities exactly. is, is totally worth it. Um, you know, uh, it, it's funny he's talked about the bartender. So on the inaugural CCPBF group cruise, mm -hmm. we had a group of some crazy people. I wasn't there. I don't know anything about it. But mm -hmm. these crazy mm -hmm. people, they were having fun at, at the Red Frog Pub. They had this bartender. Well, the, the CCPBF group cruise t-shirts that we have every year they're exactly the same every year except you know they either have a, a one or a two or a three or a four to, yeah, uh, to uh, specify which group cruise we're on so 
we went, we were on group cruise four. this last one. We were at, we, uh, uh almost <laughs> all of us had, uh, uh, the, uh, a Havana cabin and there was a bartender <laughs> at the Havana cabin and he kept seeing all of us come up with our t-shirt on. He's like, I recognize those shirts, uh, you know, and we come to realize he was one of the same bartenders that we had uh, on the Magic, and now he was on the Vista, and it was just so fun seeing mm -hmm. him again because he was a great bartender on the first cruise. He was a great bartender on the fourth mm -hmm. annual group cruise, so it, it was great. So in closing, because I know Bird's probably having a cow, and so it's 819 already over <laughs> here in Texas. So, um the one uh something else i see a lot is what is the ship's coin um a coin ceremony is a traditional ship shipbuilding event that takes place during the early stage of a ship's construction the coin serves as a symbol of good luck and many cruisers like to make a game out of trying to find it on every cruise um we'll have pictures in the group they'll be like i found the coin i found the coin so every ship uh make a make a habit out of trying to find the little coin that that it's has been welded challenging to the ship. sometimes too like right. we've had a it's couple videos a trying to find it and it's it's hard to find sometimes. It's right. Not just it's not big, always, and it's not area. always in the same place. It's not always like in the same exact location. So people and love that. They like, oh, I it's found not a coin. Even a coin. On the Carnival Triumph, we were looking around for the coin on the ship, and we're like, well, there's a dollar on here. And we're like, are you oh, sure it's you a... just couldn't find it, Matt? I'm positive. You're just... I asked every <laughs> one of the crew members and they weren't really sure, except when we talked to the hotel director, uh, she was telling us about the story, how the coin on the ship actually was stolen and they replaced it with a dollar <sighs> instead. And we're like, what somebody came $2? on the ship Sorry, with a crowbar? <laughs> I, I they came on know. with a crowbar? It's on, like thick plexiglass. So we're just wondering like, wow. <sighs> interesting but it's a cool That's story awful. and you can check that out on one of our videos on cruising.tv for that but it's definitely a fun people challenge post to pictures of that all the time they mm -hmm. make a scavenger hunt out of it trying to show it to trying to find the coin so in closing i just want to say from all of us at cruise week tv and all of us at ccppf we just want to give a heartfelt happy holidays to everyone enjoy your friends and family uh and if you're lucky enough to be on a cruise for the holidays i just want to say bob voyage Okay, we love everybody. We had a great time. I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. John, I was so glad to have you on the show tonight. And uh, it was a great show. We're running a little behind. Bird's probably. <laughs> he's good. He's good. Well, thank you, Shally. You can follow Shally as she is the founder of the very popular Facebook group, Carnival Cruisers Past, Present, and Future. And they have over 145,000 members and growing. And you can help add to that membership, too. A great group for posting questions, photos, meetings, and fellow cruisers and getting answers to all of your cruise questions. So our cruise and all of the wonderful abilities we have to bring guests in remotely would not be possible at the level we do without vMix. vMix is the live production software that powers our live show and many other high-end productions. From church services to football games, more and more live productions are on vMix. What our producer Bird really liked when he was trying to improve our show was that I give you a full 60-day trial of everything. That way you can test it out risk-free before you buy for two full months. Then they have systems starting for just $350, up to $1,500, depending on your production requirements. If you could do any sort of serious live streaming, you need vMix. Try it free at vMix.com today. Lucas is ready to start his Christmas vacation at home and a break from the comedy clubs on the ships. However, before he left, he did check out the Christmas decorations and how they are all put together on the cruise ships. Hey guys, this is comedian Lucas Bone with another episode of Life Below Deck. This episode we talk about Christmas on cruises. I was recently on the Norwegian Pearl and they had all of their holiday decorations out. As you can see, the atrium was decked with 
Christmas trees and wreaths, and it was all very festive. They did have Hanukkah decorations out by the guest services desk as well. One of the stops on our cruise was Costa Maya, Mexico, and you can see in this photo they got pretty excited with Christmas as well, a little Costa Mayan uh, Christmas tree. <laughs> we also had some unique decorations in Costa Maya. Uh, you'll get a close-up of this tree in a second. You'll see uh, they had took beer cans and made ornaments. I thought it was hysterical uh, that they did that as well. I spoke to the hotel director, and he told me that the Norwegian Pearl alone, with all of the decorations for the holidays on the one ship, they have over 40,000 different pieces of decorations that they set up uh, just for the Christmas season. Tune in next week for an all-new episode of Life Below Deck. <laughs> and I'm married, too. Are you guys married? Yeah. Yes, that's awesome. Good. How Tiffany. And you're Tiffany. Look at that. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> Listen, people, there's a reason I'm on this stage, okay? It's because I'm a professional, okay? <laughs> 40,000 decorations. That's absolutely amazing. If you guys want to check out Lucas for more of his videos, all you have to do is go to facebook.com slash comic Lucas Bone to find out more. And if you guys know someone who will enjoy the show as much as you, be nice and share that link to their Facebook page wall so they can enjoy it too. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook pages. Just doing that alone really helps our show and our sponsors support our show each and every week. Plus, you get entered into some great crew swag. As you saw earlier, uh, I believe we have given away three wonderful carnival towels. And just liking our and following our show, you get entered to win it for drawings in the future. Joe is back next week. I'll be heading to visit my parents in Connecticut. So I will not be on the next show, but I will make sure to post a wonderful segment of me and the snow in Connecticut, because we do not have snow down here. Anyway, I will leave it on the capable hands of Shally and Bird, so I'm very excited to see how that goes without me. What will they get up to? Check back in and watch right after Christmas, and I wish every one of you guys a great Christmas and a happy holidays from all of us at CruiseWeek.tv. And Debbie Smith, you rocked the comments and really nailed it tonight. Thank you so much for responding to all of them. And guys, I hope you love the show, and make sure to thank John for joining us. And as always, guys, we'll see you on the ships.